All right, how's everyone doing? Buenas tardes, mi gente. Bienvenido a Barcelona. So guys, um, before we go any further, I just want to make sure everyone is completely awake, alert, and ready to rock and roll. All right? So we're going to get to know each other pretty well today. Okay? So on the count of three, we're going to look to the left, a la izquierda, look to the right, a la derecha, and we're going to say mucho gusto, which is pleased to meet you in Spanish. Obviously, a lot of you know that, but still, let's go for it. One, two, three. Oh, that was weak. Let's try it again. Let's try it again so we can get things started off right. Mucho gusto on three. One. all over to individuals despite socioeconomic status, okay? So it's super important to keep in mind what kinds of opportunities Web3 is affording individuals from all walks of life. Almost forgot my clicker, guys. So what is Web3 and why should you care? Web3 is the next phase in the internet's evolution. It's something that's been upon us for quite some time, and everyone's talking about it, right? Web3, Web3, what is Web3, what does it mean? Well, let's just take a step back and let's think exactly about what Web2 has been affording us for years in the past, and what Web3 is doing differently to present new opportunities. So I'm gonna need your help again, guys. I'm gonna need your participation just a little bit, okay? So as it pertains to things that are important to you, by a show of hands, how many people find ownership of your data important? Levantate sus manos, levantate, levantate. Okay, great. How many people find secure and private transactions or just security and privacy important by a show of hands. Okay, great. So these are some of the key things that are being brought to the forefront by Web3. So how is that different from Web2? What are some of the key differentiating factors that are making Web3 so revolutionary and changing the landscape? Well, let's think about what was happening in the past. Due to the, dis due to the centralized nature of Web2, where a few entities owned all of the data, a few individuals made a ton of the money, Web3 is now creating a more democratized and decentralized approach toward how this data and how these resources are being distributed evenly across the board. So it's also important to note that with the idea and the concept of ownership of your data, there also comes along ownership of your IP, ownership of your likeness, and the ability to create revenue streams from this ownership, which is something that speak with, with my partner Sherard a lot, shout out to Sherard. And also, I speak with my partner David with a lot as well. David just so happens to be a seven year NFL veteran, played for the Raiders, played for the Washington football team, etc. And he had always brought up on many occasions how when he was a collegiate athlete and he was an All-American, he did not have an opportunity to monetize his likeness. He did not have an opportunity to be able to take full advantage. And these are some things that Web3 and also NIL, which is another conversation, are now affording to individuals from all over the world. 
So, there's also a big idea that we've yet to really acknowledge, and that is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Web3 is creating new opportunities within that landscape for people who do not have traditional computer science backgrounds, for people who might not necessarily have a traditional software engineering education, for individuals who might not necessarily have been afforded opportunities that they're now being afforded today. And one of those, I guess, uh, reasons would be primarily attributed to the prominence of open source technology and the access that is now being granted to individuals who typically would not have been builders in the past. Web3 is breaking down these socioeconomic barriers that have been plaguing our society for far too long. And what this means now with diversity, equity, and inclusion is that the playing field is now being leveled just a bit more. Over 34,000 new developers committed code last year. Guys, I mean, that's, that's pretty insane. That's the most in history, okay? And 65% of active Web3 developers, 65%, more than that actually, came about in 2021. So, we're looking at this landscape and we're seeing all that it offers, but of course, nothing's gonna be seamless and there are gonna be a few challenges to get past and a few hurdles for us to get over. So, how will Web3 impact our future? Well, if you think about it right now, we're super fortunate to be here together in person and about two years ago, we might not have been able to do this due to the COVID-19 pandemic and all of the restrictions that were placed upon us. So with that, we had to change a lot of different ways that we connected with one another. We had to change different ways that we interacted with one another. So just as an example, there were an array of remote work environments an array of remote learning environments, and an array of, I guess, remote entertainment or content consumption-oriented environments that were created as a result of not being able to congregate or gather together. So, a few different ways that Web3 will impact our future, and also the metaverse could potentially impact our future, could be some of these ways. changing the way that we work, changing the way that we learn, the way that we consume content and entertainment at scale. I mean, guys, very briefly, I'm from New York originally, and the MSG. In the past, if someone gave me a ticket, without hesitation, I'm definitely heading out there. Love Billy. I know you guys do too. <laughs> How with DAOs. So, if we for some reason could not be here today, we might have been able to connect in a metaverse-oriented environment. And I wouldn't be here, I might be somewhere else. Could you roll the first one, please? The first video? Thank you. There I am looking around, wondering why no one's talking to me.
But this is exactly what we could have done. I could have been right there in the middle of an arena or a stadium or a venue just like this speaking to you all so that we could remain connected and so that there would be no issue in being able to bring this message to you and being able to connect at scale. Okay, you can, you can cut that. Thank you. So what has been the difficulty with Web3 and metaverse adoption? Well, after speaking to an array of people, and these are people who are native to the space, these are people who are not, a lot of individuals, because I mean the primary goal here for all of us here is to get as many people on board with these big ideas and these big concepts, right? Individuals who are not native to the blockchain space, native to the distributed ledger, or native to Web3 can sometimes feel like the experience is a bit clunky, or cumbersome, or off-putting, or intimidating. Individuals who aren't native gamers can also feel the same way as well. What we found is that when you think about certain metaverse-oriented products, and you think about the experience, you think about the 2D or 8-bit or 16-bit graphics, it could sometimes be just a tad bit off to certain people, and they could lack that connectivity. So after speaking to a lot of individuals who are interested in getting involved in the space, what we found at Eon XI is that there is a solution. Are you curious about the solution? <laughs> a photorealistic metaverse. People should not look at the metaverse as just a game. They should not consider the metaverse just something that they're getting involved in to play and earn, much like what the individuals who were discussing, uh, who were discussing prior to me were uh, mentioning, but more so seeing the metaverse as an extension of your own reality where you can create, where you can build, where you can be a part of a community, and where you could also have the opportunity to create wealth and a new wave of revenue for yourself. Essentially, Web3 is putting the power back into the hands of the people, as opposed to having it centralized and controlled by a very small group of people. It's about community. Bless you. So, I, I, I didn't discuss this with the team, so I'll ask for some permission. Hey guys, I, I have a spoiler here. Do I have your, do I have your sign off? All right, so ultimately, when you think about mass adoption, when you think about being able to drive a ton of people into this new era and into the new wave, the only way to do so is by having a scalable network infrastructure, by having support, and by aligning yourself with organizations, strategic thinkers, and people who are adamant about doing things in the right way. We start with gaming, but the end result is tapping into every facet of social interaction to take things to the next level. So that's why I'm excited to say today that our metaverse will be built on the Avalanche network and would love to give you guys a sneak peek at what we're building. Could you roll the second one? Thank you. Imagine a virtual world with endless possibilities. Become a mogul and build a dynasty in the metaverse. Purchase virtual land, attend and host exclusive events. Participate in rare NFT drops. Connect with friends, challenge friends, boost your status and rise through the ranks, all while earning tokens for participating. Join us while we revolutionize gaming, build the next generation of moguls, and 
create an additional revenue stream for you so that you may earn while you play. Become a part of history and enter the world of moguls. Thank you. So that's just a sneak peek of what we're building. We're very excited to bring a lot more headed your way. And ultimately, if you're a builder, if you're a developer, an enterprise, a leader, a strategic thinker, we would like to speak to you. Thank you so much for your time. Please feel free to follow us on Twitter. We'd love to connect and enjoy the rest of the summit.